Hey everyone, it's Miriam. I hope you're all really well and in this week's video I decided to go for something a little bit simpler than what I've been doing in the past couple of videos because I've been quite a little bit stressed and a little bit under the weather and so I needed to compose myself and do some work from reference and some studies to get myself back into the groove, if that makes sense. If any of you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen the other two Rhino paintings that I did in the past. And one of them is actually in my earlier videos on this channel, it's like, like a real-time paint and chat video. I think it's in two or three parts. And the reason I've been doing so many Rhino paintings is not because I've, I've got... A, I like rhinos, I mean they're really fun to paint, but they're not in any way of an animal that I particularly favour. It's just that I've wanted to do some kind of pieces that I would sell for charity. So I've got a few causes kind of listed in my sketchbook that I'd quite like to do pieces of, for, of which the, the some parts of the profits from the sales, if I sell any, would go to a variety of different charities that help those different causes, if that makes sense. And so the Rhino one, I want to do a seri series of stickers where there would be about three or four stickers in the series and the part of the profits would go, obviously, to a charity that helps critically endangered animals, and especially in this case, rhinos. So I had also in mind to do other animals, I don't know, I'll see if anyone has suggestions. You're more than welcome to post them in the comments. So, the two other paintings I did of rhinos were paintings with a little twist. So, the first one was a rhino that I then embellished with blue flowers kind of tattoo like and then the second one has um actual traditional very very traditional classic tattoos on him so he's covered in like pin up and flowers and sparrows and <laughs> all that kind of thing and i wanted to do a third one i wanted it to be a free pack a, a free sticker pack and so this painting right here that you're seeing me painting was intended to be the first the third sticker in the pack but in the end, I finished this painting and I actually was really happy with the result, kind of this semi-realistic gouache rhino painting, and I didn't really want to add any other embellishment to him. So I think I'm, I might have to get back to this third sticker idea at another point, because he's not it. But he actually ended up being part of his own little side project, because I always have a million different side projects. If you watch throughout the whole video, you, you'll you notice that I only use one brush throughout the whole painting. And that's because it was a new brush that I'd bought on a complete whim, because I don't actually tend to buy brushes that often. Um, but I ended up finding this enormous, the most wonderful art shop ever, um, and I spent way too much time in it. And I'm really surprised that I actually didn't pay more money. But I bought this brush, and it's a one quarter of an inch sword system free dalla rowney brush and it's basically this flat angled brush and i don't really know why i f crushed on that one in particular because it's never a type of brush i've ever used before either in size or in shape but i think i'd seen a few people working and on pieces with the um the, the chisel end of Copic markers and I thought it gave a really really nice texture thing so I thought I'd try and do the equivalent the same thing with a brush so I bought this brush and I think it's an acrylic brush I'm not actually entirely sure what medium it's recommended for but it turns out I am absolutely in love with it for gouache I think it's my new favorite thing to paint with ever before I wasn't I've I've always had loads of brushes and always a couple favourites that I use for everything. But they weren't for quite they were perfect for watercolour, but when it came to gouache, I realised that I like short, stiff bristles. And most of the brushes that I actually own, because I've been doing watercolour for much longer than I've been doing gouache, I mostly have watercolour brushes and I don't find that they're very suitable for the opaque look and the, the kind of brush strokey look that I'm going for in gouache. So this brush I think is now my actual favourite. 
And so it led to me wanting to do a few animal portraits because something I've wanted to practice for a while are textures and especially organic textures, so skin textures and scale textures and that kind of that kind of really kind of creaturey thing that um, gives a character a lot more depth. So I want to uh, learn how to use light and shading to achieve those organic textures and I want to be able to master them enough that I can then use them a bit more instinctively in my work. So I'm this is the first one of my of the portraits I want to do and then the next one will be a juvenile crocodile that I've already painted. I don't know if I'll upload it next week but I'll upload it in the next few weeks. I don't want to upload all the portraits in one go, it could get a bit boring to just have the same videos every week but I'll, I'll upload them in the future and alternate them with other projects. So yeah, let me know uh, if you guys have used this kind of brush. Uh, let me know what you think of it. If you use chisel end or a copper marker, I'd love to know what you think of that technique. Also, please let me know what you think of this rhino. I was really happy with it, I'll be honest, because for for finally I managed to be looser and not blend as much and not and actually see those brush strokes and. I just, for some reason, felt really free with this brush. I felt in control and I didn't feel as as terrified of every brush stroke I was putting on the paper and it kind of worked together with what I wanted to achieve. I don't know, I'm so happy with this brush. I can't tell you enough how much I love it. <laughs> To go back to some technical talk to end this video about what's going on on the screen, I probably used about three different, four different colours in the entire painting and they were heavily, heavily, heavily reliant on um, ochre and paint grey. There was some kind of red, like you saw at the end, I always add a touch of red to any kind of living creature that I'm painting because I, I think it adds depth and, and life to it. And there was some dark brown. I'm sorry I don't have the exact the exact names of the paintings. I'm really bad. I put them in my in my palette and now I've completely forgotten which tube they came from. Uh, one day I'll be organised enough to let you know. Jeez, I'm so sorry. <laughs> anyway, this video is coming to an end, so it's time for me to say thank you for joining me. Um please join me on Instagram if you want to see more of my day-to-day -day sketching and bit um paintings that I don't necessarily record for YouTube and the like. I have also recently refurbished my entire shop so if anyone is interested in buying a print of mine uh, all of my coloured card project paintings are on there as well as some other big painting projects. This guy isn't but if anyone wants to uh, do let me do drop me a note and I'll put it up there for you. Um, but yeah I hope you guys are all really really well. Thanks for joining me and I hope I'll see you next week. Bye everyone!